1965, the filmmakers bring to you their village. Lanes, fields, hedgerows, the high street, and a great variety of rural architecture are the real stars of this film. These have been here for centuries, for this lovely village is rooted well in English history. You will see a few of the present-day villagers living against this ancient setting, repeating in their turn the normal rhythm of daily life. Rural England is changing, and specialization in the farming industry has altered greatly the pattern of work. Fewer people work on the farms. As machinery speeds up, and increases one man's efficiency. Each day, many villagers journey to nearby towns, where light industries now offer varied forms of employment. Within the village, there are many interesting organizations, well supported by young and old alike. In this film, we can but show a few of these. Notable changes in the village life are recorded by older villagers. The saddler, the miller, the blacksmith, the wheelwright and the carpenter, these have gone. Those who require the services of such craftsmen must go to the market towns and shopping centres. Despite these fundamental changes, there is still a strong sense of village life. After the day's work in factory or office or on the farm, evening time finds the villagers engaged in many pursuits. Church and chapel, clubs and pubs provide an interesting variety of meeting points and activities. Newcomers to the village are soon absorbed by the opportunities for leisurely meeting with neighbours. Pottern landmarks include the fine, sturdy, early English church of St Mary the Virgin, closely linked in time with the Cathedral Church in Salisbury. There is a fine group of timbered dwellings in the High Street, most notable being the Porch House. Many handsome thatched cottages and fine homes of larger proportions abound. Two distinctive dwellings of the latter category are Court Hill House and Church House. On the windswept hill of Pottern Field, there is the single outstanding elm tree, one of three planted by the Grubb family to commemorate Waterloo. The traveller is well advised to leave his car and explore the village on foot. Like many North Plain villages, Pottern can offer rare views of unsurpassable beauty. Vistas of the downland to the north and Salisbury Plain to the south, wooded corners and ancient lanes of great beauty. Stroud Hill Farm lies to the south of the woodlands known as Grubbs Wood. Mr. Cecil Brown is seen admitting his herd for early morning milking.
Like all dairy farmers, his is a seven-day working week. Modern milking machinery has greatly assisted such farmers. This type of milking machine is used throughout the village. Similar to many rural areas, only half of the farms in the village are milk producing compared with 25 years ago. Before being collected by the processing dairy, the milk passes through the cooling unit. The milk float and milk bottle are as much a feature of village life as in the town. Johnny, our local milkman, delivers to Mrs. Wells before driving off to complete his round. The village post office is in the High Street. The postal service maintains efficient timekeeping despite the moods of wind and weather. Deliveries to the more outlying parts of the village are made by van, but Walter Burt still uses a bicycle. better than most. With his workmates, he drives many miles each day on the highways and lanes of this beautiful area. The quiet jog of horse-drawn haulage is over. The thunder of the diesel engine is the sound of modern transport. Mr. and Mrs. Fred Pynchon keep the village grocery and meat store. Originally one of the village bakeries. This building at one time housed an old type brickside flue oven, which is no longer an economical proposition for baking. The nearby market town serves the villagers for some of their needs. Gone are the days of the jumbled general store. A modern and well-equipped shop is a necessary feature of the village. As their fathers before them, these children still make the village store their centre before making their way to school. The school bell housed in the roof of the headmaster's house now remain silent. In its place, the handbell is rung by Mr. Naylor, the headmaster. This building has seen many changes. Mr. and Mrs. Smith now have their petrol station and hardware store where once the village settler worked. The craftsman, the saddler, was Bill Smith's father. The late Mr. Smith was also for many years the much respected licensee of the Georgian Dragon. The village now boasts its own ladies' hairdressing salon. Since 1964, Miss Rosemary has served the ladies of the village.
Tottenham possesses three inns and a club. Here we see the drayman of the local brewery making a routine delivery. Chris Giddings is a thatcher. His work is admired by all who appreciate the beauty that is attendant upon sound craftsmanship. There is still a wide demand for his ancient craft. Weather-beaten faces are a common feature on land and sea. And rural Britain provides many fine examples. Our old friend and villager, Mr. Harry Bryant, has spent a long life in outdoor work. He still tends his garden and our film reveals some of his skill in handling garden tools. The village verger, Mr. Len Wells, will soon celebrate the hundredth year of his family's service to the village church. He serves well our beautiful church of St. Mary the Virgin. As bell ringer, clock minder, he maintains the efficiency of the tower. His son, Hubert Wells, assists him in the maintenance of the churchyard. The beautiful aspect of church and grounds owes much to the work of father and son. The Manor House, Court Hill, is set in attractive grounds, which give a delightful southerly view to the present occupants, the headquarters staff of the Wiltshire Fire Service. This large house, like so many others, enjoys a new lease of life by serving as the headquarters of a public department. A local fire officer, Mr. Tom Baker, display some early models of firefighting equipment with old type firemen's helmets. Our film shows a little of the activity of the brigade control room and at the time of filming a local farm fire demanded prompt attention from the control staff and firefighting crews. 
The colored telephones assist the control officer as he gives directions for the fire appliances to be deployed. A long list of names reveals the unbroken service of the church's ministers in this parish. The Reverend J.T. Davis maintains an office which is centuries old. Births, baptisms, burials are a regular outward action of his office. But we all should remember the intercessions regularly and daily offered for our village and people. The vicar is the guardian of our Christian state, and we owe to him friendship and loyalty, for he is always available to assist us in our need for God's ministry. Our film shows the vicar preparing for a wedding. Many forget that the church is an important custodian of records, and the priest must prepare the appropriate registers before the service of holy matrimony. This is the day for Miss Sandra Tracy. The village church is an attractive setting for the young couple whom we see on their wedding day. The vows before the priest have been made the records of our village have received more names. The joyful bells have been released to give their merry greeting. And we see the newlyweds descent from the church, surrounded by their happy relations and friends. Under the leadership of Brown Owl, Mrs. Hopkins, the, the Brownies perform their opening ceremony. These children portray the gay, carefree spirit of the younger generation of the village. Similar organizations cater for other age groups and are typical of the many varied activities which function through the zeal and enthusiasm of the adult organizers. Although lacking a village green, traditional cricket matches have been played for the past 30 years in the delightful setting of the grove. These pleasant surroundings are in close proximity to the butts, reminding us of that even more ancient pastime, archery. Other forms 
of social activity are to be found in the local inns, where many enjoyable evenings are spent. The ever popular game of darts is still a feature of the inns. Now found side by side with the rival attraction, the one armed bandit. Members of the Rifle Club are seen firing in the tube range. These ranges are peculiar to the Devices District. The club offers many pleasant hours of enjoyment and friendly competition to its members. The Potter players are seen rehearsing for their festival production. This company has been flourishing for the past 17 years, producing both comic and dramatic entertainment of high order. Time, gentlemen, please. How reluctantly the customers depart. enthusiastic masters to the younger generation. in verger's robes leads the church choir in solemn procession. 
they proudly wear the light blue of the Royal School of English Church Music, to which they are affiliated. Church musicians everywhere proudly give their services, amateur or professional, and Pottern Church is fortunate in its loyal choristers and organists. The church possesses a well-built two-manual organ with pedals. This is placed in a loft on the south side. This instrument greatly helps sun worship. The procession we see precedes the service of matins, and as we watch the choir enter the dimly lit chancel, let us remember the centuries past and the villagers who have worshipped Almighty God in this place.